I said to you that dreams and visions are often connected with your purpose. Otherwise, God wouldn't place in your heart for, do, for you to do certain things. And in the process of working hard towards your dreams and visions, you will always tumble onto your fulfillment, your, your satisfaction in the Lord. Amen? Because if it's, if it's for self-indulgence, he would not grant you that. Amen? It got to be for his glory and purpose. So from the inception of a dream to the, the fulfillment of a vision or a dream, there is a process. There is a process called incubation. There are spiritual laws of incubation. Before I get deeper into this thing, let me define incubation. What is the definition of incubation? Incubation is the process of keeping something at the right temperature let me add that in the right environment and under the right conditions so it can develop we all know when mother bird sits on her eggs there is a time that they will be hatched but she incubates until they are hatched so she keeps a temperature that the eggs need to mature into life she is very protective during that time and she will do anything in her power to make sure the environment is safe when we talk about the temperature we talk about the environment there's this first spiritual rule law I'm giving you about the dream environment is very very crucial we must understand that God is God of atmosphere. He's God of environment. Because if you look at Revelation chapter 4 and Isaiah 6, it is the vision of God's very throne. And both of these texts in Revelation 4 and Isaiah 6, when the Bible takes us this imagery of God's very own throne, we find that there is a certain kind of atmosphere that is attributed to God's very presence. We see that the angels are worshipping unceasingly day and night and crying out, Holy, holy, holy. We understand that the atmosphere in the very presence of God is charged with worship. There's certain elements that are causing that atmosphere to be conducive for God to sit on his throne. We also find that the, the, the glory of God is so intense. So intense in the throne room that the angels and even the elders will take their crown under the weight of God's glory and lay it at his feet in all of his majesty and splendor. So we understand that there is glory that the atmosphere is charged with. In fact, the creatures are crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So there is a declaration of God's attributes, of His holiness, of His rule, His reign, His power and majesty. And the atmosphere in the throne room is charged with all those voices, those sounds. Isaiah goes on to say that there is kind of like a smoke in the temple. And throughout the scriptures, we find that kind of imagery relating to God's presence. When God met Moses on the mountain, we find that there was a fire on the mountain in the bush. There's certain elements to his presence. And wherever he is found, we find those kind of atmosphere, that kind of atmosphere and those elements in his presence. Because God is God of atmosphere and environment. Throughout the scriptures, that kind of pattern is found. Throughout the scripture, everything relating to his presence is found with a certain kind of atmosphere. Now, everything that God created was created for an atmosphere. Everything. Everything. You look at the creatures. Before he created the creatures, he created a suitable environment for them. Before he made the fish, he made the waters. Before he made the birds, he made the, the, the air for them. 
before he made mankind he already had made Eden for them for them to survive before God created any kind of creation he had already created an environment for their survival and out of that environment they could not survive fish out of water cannot survive you place a bird in the water the bird would not survive Adam was created to live and breathe in a place called Eden because God is God of environment and God created for Adam to an environment called Eden and in Eden Adam was satisfied hallelujah in Eden he God could come and have communion with Adam in Eden Adam found his wife God gave him a wife in Eden he enjoyed the life eternal because after the sin he would die but prior to that he had life to the fullest Eden provided everything he didn't need to look anywhere else everything that he needed was provided in an environment called Eden before Adam was even created creatures were dependent on the environment they are dependent on the environment and that's why the enemy came and he polluted the environment he polluted the environment with sin because he knew if i could corrupt this holy environment and if adam is kicked out of his environment environment that he's supposed to live and survive he will have no purpose out of it Adam Adam sinned the environment was polluted and Adam was kicked out of God's presence the holy presence you know why because God would protect his environment he will place cherubs in Eden to protect what to protect his holy environment you and I are creatures of environment out of the environment that God has created you for you cannot survive and your very purpose was to live breathe in the very presence of God because that's how Adam was created Adam was created in an environment that was conducive for God's presence that was drenching with God's glory because when bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God it was the glory that was covering of Adam it was the glory that departed adam was created for that glory you were created for the glorious presence of god and unless you return to that environment you will have no fulfillment in your life your purpose is hidden in that environment and that's why the enemy knows enemy knows these laws and he understands that that there is a dream that god has placed in life and that dream may be the carrier of god's purpose in one's life and may bring god glory through that life but the dream need incubation dream need to be nurtured in a right kind of environment and temperature let me go and pollute their environment so he comes into your houses and pollute your environment that you don't even have time to pray or think or read because all your mind is occupied with strife and division and complain and gossip he corrupts your environment to rob you of your purpose he corrupts your environment at your workplace uh, where people are on your case all the time uh, and there's not even time for you to have a moment of sanity and there all your hard work no matter how much you put into it no matter how much you desire for promotion is not happening because the incubation has been disturbed every single time the temperatures have been lifted up bring it down lift it up bring it down and the babies have been aborted the process is a crucial 
Many of us don't survive the process of a dream and vision because we don't know how to maintain the temperatures. We don't know how to save God the process called incubation. And that's why the dreams are not fulfilled. That's why the lives are miserable. You did not compromise your environment to incubate. Go hungry but sit on it. Go without a company but sit on it. Don't let go of his sight, uh, his process, uh, and you will be over it when the babies are hatched. But it's time for isolation. Let it be. It's time for isolation. Satan understands the principles. And exactly what he did in the Eden. And let me say that, no matter how gifted you are, no matter how talented you are, no matter how educated you are, how good you are, you cannot survive in a toxic environment. You can work yourself to bone. You can pour your life into things. But if you're not in the right environment, there's no progress. You are the product of your environment. Let me repeat that. You are the product of your environment. You dare not compromise it. Satan understands this principle and it's one of the reasons he was kicked out of God's very presence. Because he polluted God's presence with rebellion. One third of the angels fell for that. God kicked him out. Because God will protect his environment. God loved Adam so much. He was, Adam was his prize creation. But God had to kick him out of Eden. Because God will protect his environment. He will not compromise it. So you're the product of your environment. It, may, it indicates your emotions. It, it dictates your emotions. It shapes your character. It, it, it directs your conjunctive abilities and purposes. Everything to do is with the environment. You must protect your Eden at all costs. Amen.